Is there a difference between the variances of the number of weeks on the bestseller list for nonfiction and fiction books? 15 New York Times bestselling fiction books had a standard deviation of 6.17 weeks on the list. 16 New York Times bestselling nonfiction books had a standard deviation of 13.12 weeks. At the 10% significance level, can we conclude there is a difference in the variances? This final sentence here tells me that we're dealing with a hypothesis test about the population variances for these two groups. So we have two samples that have been independently and randomly drawn from their respective populations. And it looks like we have pretty small sample sizes, 15 and 16. At this moment, actually, I would be concerned that we aren't meeting the requirements of this procedure. The procedure requires that the populations that we draw the samples from are normal distributions. And with these small sample sizes, we couldn't certainly verify that. Those are too small to be sure that those are normally distributed. It would be hard for us to show that. And um, this test is actually pretty sensitive to that. So the test we're going to use is the F test. And just a little heads up, you know, the F test requires that both populations that you draw your samples from are normal distributions. And the fact that uh, here we'd have a hard time verifying that with the small sample sizes and there's no mention in the problem that the data um, comes from normal distributions, um, at that point, you know, we, we might be concerned that we're not meeting the requirements of the procedure. Okay, but let's put that aside for now because we just want to practice the technique. So we'll just pretend that they're um, that we know that these variables are normally distributed and we'll move on with the problem. So let's identify the significance level here in the problem. It's 10% and let's try to identify the claim over here in our first step of the process. So when running an F-test to compare two population variances, we have a similar set of steps for the hypothesis test. We're still going to identify the claim. The only difference is the claim is going to be about the variances. So it says here, can we conclude there's a difference in the variances, right? A difference in the variances. Well, that would mean essentially that what? the variance, which I'll call sigma squared, and let's say the variance for fiction books, right? Starting first, fiction books, is not equal to the variance for nonfiction books. So NF for nonfiction. So again, it says the difference is in the variances. Can we conclude there is a difference in the variances? This shows that there is a difference. It doesn't say one is greater than the other. It just says that they're not the same, right? OK, so now from there, we'll do HOHA. Now, because of this not equal to sign, the claim and HA are the same. So I'll do sigma squared for fiction is not equal to sigma squared for nonfiction here. And then for HO, we'll have the opposite of that, which is going to be equal to, right? So sigma squared for fiction is equal to sigma squared for nonfiction. All right, so we have our claim, our HO, or HA. You know, our next step is to usually record the data. So let's do that data for the fiction group, data for the nonfiction group. All right, for the fiction group, they give us that there are 15 sample or 15 items drawn, 15 um, books that are looked at. So N is 15. And then they tell us the standard deviation. So that's our S for that group of 15 books is 6.17. And it says 16 New York Times bestselling books are looked at for the nonfiction section. So N is equal to 16. And it says a standard deviation for those books is 13.12. Okay, so clearly it looks like there's a difference, right? I mean, obviously the standard deviation is twice the size of that one. And then we're given that there's an alpha of 10%, 0.10. Okay, now our next step in the problem is to identify the test statistic, right? So to create the test statistic. Well, the test statistic is going to be a simple formula. It's going to be an F test statistic. And the formula is actually very nice. What we do is we put the ratio of two standard deviations, right, squared. So in other words, two sample variances are going to be squared. I mean, sorry, not squared. Two sample variances put in a fraction to form a ratio, or two standard deviations squared, which is the same as variances, put in a fraction to form a ratio. The rule we're going to use is very simple here. We're going to put the one that had the larger sample standard deviation or variance on top. So in this case, the nonfiction one is going to go on top and the fiction one is going to go on the bottom. So our numerator will be nonfiction because this value is the bigger of the two. We're going to use that procedure because our tables are set up to always have a right tailed test in this procedure. And so we want to make sure that this is always larger than one, this ratio. And by putting the larger number on top, we'll guarantee that. Okay, so let's just plug in the numbers now. So this is a standard deviation, so we will have to square it. It'll be divided by another standard deviation, which will also have to be squared. All right, let's do that work in our calculator and see what that gives us.
Okay, so we'll have 13.12 squared divided by 6.17 squared. When I do that, I get the answer 4.522. 4 4.522. That is my F test statistic. Okay, so that's done. Now from there, we have to compare our test stat to a critical value. Now this is an F test, and this test statistic has an F distribution. The curve for the F distribution looks, in many cases, like this. So the curves depend on, of course, the degrees of freedom involved, but typically it looks something like that. So it's a right skewed distribution, right? And what we want to do then is find a rejection region that will be in the upper tail here. So we're looking for an F value right here, this guy here, which will be a critical value that separates the rejection region from the do not reject region. Okay, so here's the idea. The critical value for a two-tailed test, which is what we're dealing with here, is going to have alpha of half of the value we started with. So what we're going to do when we have a two-tailed test is chop that alpha in half. So we're going to use 0 0.05. Now you only do that for the two-tailed test. If it's a one-tailed test, you just put all that alpha into this right tail. But for the two-tailed test, we chop it in half and we put 5% in this case, since it's half of 10, in that right tail. And then we look up degrees of freedom. There's going to be two degrees of freedom for this f value. We're going to have the degrees of freedom for the numerator and the degrees of freedom for the denominator. Now the degrees of freedom for the numerator is basically going to be the one we put on top. So in this case it would be 16 minus 1, or 15. And then it'll be 15 minus 1, because that was our denominator value. So 15 minus 1, which is 14 for the denominator degrees of freedom. And this is the value we have to look up on our F table. So we're going to go to the F table that says 0.05 at the top. We're going to look at 15 degrees of freedom on the top row. And on the leftmost column, we'll look up 14 degrees of freedom. We'll find the corresponding value, and that will be our critical value. So let's go to the table and do that now. OK, so we're on the 0.05 table, and we're looking for numerator degrees of freedom 15, denominator degrees of freedom 14. We don't have numerator degrees of freedom 15 on this first page of the table, so what I'm going to do is take that off and look at just the second page of the table. So now looking at the second page of the table, we see that we do have 15 at the top, and we're going to go down to 14 here. And when we come down to 14, we find the answer 2.46, 2.46. Okay, so our critical value turned out to be 2.463. So this F value is 2.463. Okay, so now that that's our critical value, we can look at our F test statistic and see that it lands in the tail here. So we're going to conclude that we should reject HO. It's very similar to our traditional method of hypothesis testing, right? Once this lands in the rejection region, you say to reject HO and therefore to support HA. All right, now looking at our claim, we see our claim is HA. So we're going to use this terminology. We'll say the sample data, the sample data support the claim. OK, and the claim, of course, here is that the two population variances are not equal, which we could have suspected because of the fact that there's such a large difference between the sample standard deviations. 